works. This is a demonstration using an automotive headrest of how to create flat patterns using exact flat for SOLIDWORKS. You can see that we've got an automotive headrest here modeled in SOLIDWORKS and the first part of the process is to create pattern pieces from the CAD geometry which is given. It's pretty straightforward. Um, first we click on the exact flat tools to launch the exact flat toolbars. We're just going to start the timer here and we're going to launch our piece creator. Now what the piece creator is going to do is it's going to take the individual surface bodies from the CAD modeling process. We can select them and uh, create a piece out of it. So why do we want to do this? Well this particular headrest when it's uh, put onto the, onto the foam bun will be uh, utilizing four uh, pieces of fabric and by taking the CAD geometry here and knitting the surface together this is going to be a representation of what the designer actually had in mind those four uh, uh, pieces of fabric that would be put onto the headrest you can see it's very straightforward we just click on the pieces we select them and um, when we've selected all the desired pieces we click create we could name these pieces if we wanted to for uh, managing larger project projects with uh, much more uh, pattern pieces, but in this particular case we'll just have the uh, the default names come up. And it should take us a second just to get these four pieces um, selected and created. And um, there you have it. When the pieces are selected they turn transparent so they're locked for editing. And now we click OK. And what's happening now is the individual surface bodies are being knit together to create overall pattern pieces. Once that's done, we go to convert to exact flat. Now we're creating an actual sewn product. And in this uh, part of the process, the program is creating a UV mapping and indexing all the mesh vertices locations. We are going to first apply a material. So we're going to assign a, a leather to this, uh, to this headrest. And what's going to happen now is um, when we view our pattern, we're going to create a, 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 our fracture algorithm, algorithm is going to create an initial flat surface area. We're just going to lay these out using our fine tool. And what the fine tool does, it creates a visual sewing layout. So this is just a practice that we've adopted. It's not necessary to do it at this stage, but nevertheless, we're going to do it because it makes it a little bit more intuitive when we go to flattening. We've launched our flattening environment. The flattening environment is um, uh, can run in the background if you are using if you are doing other tasks at the same time. And the first part of the process is we're going to create uh, an optimized mesh. Now we create an optimized mesh for a variety of reasons. The first uh, is it actually decreases solve time for the flattening optimization algorithms. And the second is it creates a more accurate uh, fitting flat pattern that better represents the uh, geometry that is in question. What's happening here is we are just uh, redrawing the um, mesh surface elements. Um, and this should just take a second or two to, to finish up here. Uh, once that's done, you can see a, 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 a strain map. The optimization algorithm then is launched, and now we're actually creating the accurate fitting pattern pieces. So this, you'll see. Uh, the color is changing here. The colors indicate stress uh, locations or sag locations on the pattern piece. Geometry, which is more developable or uh, simpler uh, with uh, no multi-axle bends, generally solves faster. As you can see, there's one piece at the top that's already completed. And geometry, which is more complex, that has more multi-axle uh, bends in it, um, it takes longer to solve. Uh, this, this particular piece here is the more complicated of the set and well, I would expect that this is going to take longest to solve. Now what the algorithm is doing here is it searches for stress and sag on the pattern piece and as it finds the stress and sag it attempts to relax it. So where there's stress it's going to add material, where there's sag it's going to pinch it away. The visual indication you can see on uh, the right hand pane here is where the, um, uh, the bulk of the stress is and we've color coded it uh, if it's black, it's under 5%. If it's red, it's over 20%. And these are settings which um, the designer can configure as well. So we're almost finished here. What the uh, process, uh, the algorithm is going through is uh, one that we call energy dampening. It's actually looking 
for um, uh, where the energy is in the pattern piece and it's removing that energy. Um, and if anybody wants to know what we mean by energy dampening, they can certainly give us a call. We can explain it in more detail. I should also mention that uh, there, we get a lot of questions about what to do when you're putting fabric over soft surfaces and do you have to accommodate for crush. So this particular part is a headrest, which would be fabric wrapped over a foam, uh, a foam model. And sometimes the fabrics would create tension and actually crush the underlying uh, uh, element that it's, that it's wrapped over. And what we find is that um, uh, uh, there's a number of ways to accommodate this. First and foremost, you could have a negative offset or shrink your actual geometric uh, uh, part to be the desired shape um, that you want for uh, the part to be uh, implemented under stress, right, or under, 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 uh, under conditions where it's wrapped. Some customers do this. Um, some customers uh, just let that uh, negative offset be achieved by the fabric wrapped on. And this is really where the science and the art sort of come together. Um, this is a simulation. The simulation has inputs and starting points. And the starting point for this simulation is the 3D geometry. So if your 3D geometry in its end state, this is the finished state when it is you know, installed and wrapped by fabric and so on is significantly different than the 3D geometry that the simulation starts with. There may be some deviance from uh, what the designer has intended. What we find is that uh, the design intent act reflected will lead to an accurate fitting flat pattern. And um, we have a number of settings where designers can, you know, they can configure the tolerances so that uh, the, the fit can be optimized. We're just about done here, and there you have it. So now we're going to go. Um, back into our uh, our main pattern view and you can see that what we have left to do is just rebuild the piece so we're going to click rebuild this shouldn't take too long to rebuild the piece and the geometry will be updated based on what the uh, uh, simulation has uh, has output and there it is and now we're just going to lay it out again which we'll just uh, magically skip ahead here there it is laid out again in the pattern we in the layout that we had before and that's it that's how you flatten a headrest if anybody wants to know more, give us a call or visit our website.